I'm excited to welcome Craig Gold to um, Totally Music to chat about his musical career. Craig, welcome to Totally Music. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Craig Gold uh, from uh, coming live from Burton on Trent in 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 our um, office slash recording studio slash uh, general tip <laughs> dump for the house. Are you good? Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, it's nice to have you on. Um, so, how did you get into music? Uh, well, I think I've always found music um, kind of as an escapism, really. And uh, it's been with me as far back as I can remember. Because on in our house on Sundays, Sunday mornings, mum wouldn't let us put the, put the telly on. It was radio only on a Sunday morning. Um... And then we'd have dinner, and then and then the telly would go on for the for, for the EastEnders EastEnders omnibus, which is what my mum used to watch. Uh and um, yeah. So we always used to have the radio on, and uh, you know, going back to them times as well. Like I used to listen to the football on the radio a lot with my dad, listening to the Villa games. So I mean, this is this sounds like I'm older than I am. Because it was just like, we did have Nintendos and that when I was a kid, but um, yeah, kind of radio and and I remember my my uh my granddad give me a uh, one of his little radio things when I would have been about maybe eight or nine, and it was battery powered, and uh I had a cabin bed, yeah. so, so for anyone who doesn't know what a cabin bed is, it's like a single bed for kids. It goes up and then underneath is drawers and the cupboard and all that. And you could climb under it and, and hide at the back. So I used to have a little a little hidey hole at the back. And I used to listen to the radio there. So yeah, I kind of my my connection with music kind of started then because I I'd listen to the radio for for hours at a time. Yeah. Um so for those who haven't heard your music before, how would you describe it? Uh I th I think it crosses quite a lot of genres. I mean, at the core, it is like folk Americana country, but there's hints of blues in there, indie, and rock as well. Um, so yeah, it, my songs aren't like overly complicated, and I try and. I try and just sort of keep them as like melody driven. So I think most people will be able to connect with a with, with a melody inside them. Uh, some are quite sad, some are quite happy. But uh, yeah, I think I I like to, yeah. I suppose melody is the is the key for me when it comes to songwriting. And I think if you if you're a melodical writer and performer, then a lot of people can connect with that regardless of what their uh, favourite sort of world of music it would be. Um, yeah, so I hate the term easily, easy listening. Because I remember as a kid, if you go in like HMV and you see the easy listening section, it always be all boring stuff. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that. But I I like to think that it's um you know it ticks a, it ticks a few boxes genre wise and I write honestly and I think my songwriting is really authentic so yeah um so where do you get your inspiration from for your music well going back to when I was younger I had a what was coming up to a Christmas? It was, it was either Christmas or my birthday. I can't remember. Mum told me that she, because we'd recently bought a CD player for the house, and Mum bought me a, a a CD single, which was my first one, which was Meatloaf's um, "I'd Do Anything for Love." I can't remember the year that came out, but it's going to be like ninety four ish, maybe somewhere around then, ninety five maybe. And uh, so and then she said, 
um, right, so for your whatever it was, birthday or Christmas coming, she said, I'll buy you your first album. You gotta have to think about what you want. And at the time, I was enjoying the Spice Girls, uh, probably something to do with being a teenager going through puberty, uh, as well as their popularity at the time. Yeah, and then I'd heard a band from Birmingham called Ocean Colour Scene on the radio and uh, never heard anything like it before. And uh, it was the day we caught the train was the was the single. And that 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 was nineteen ninety six when 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 that came out. Uh yeah, so I was, it was a toss up, and I remember being in the CD shop, being Spice Girls, Ocean Colour Scene. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. I chose Ocean Colour Scene, and uh, I'm glad I did. <laughs> uh, I think that was kind of the start, really, because I was fortunate that I grew up around a time where the music in in the UK was just amazing, and we, there was like guitar based bands and music just everywhere and it was the pop music of the day and it had connections to the 60s uh, so it connected us back to discovering like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Bob Dylan and all that and uh, yeah so I think for getting me into music and an inspiration to start playing was that was the kind of journey you know you'd look at what bands the bands that that, that i first got into like ocean color scene and and look at their people who were influences for them and it was like the beatles and like neil young david bowie free and then you start looking at that sort of music era and then there was like the small faces and the kinks and and, and yeah, it was just an incredible time. As I got a little bit older, my mum had moved to Crewe and uh, she used to go out on um, a couple of country music nights at some of the local pubs around like Nantwich and Sandbatch and Crewe. So when I used to go up and see her, she'd take me out. And that was kind of where I started listening to, to country and um, Johnny Cash and you know, listening to some, I mean, it was, uh, some of it was more the cheesy side of country, but it certainly gave me a taste for sort of, I think that's where the blend in my music taste kind of happened there. Um, Between, between what, what I I went and discovered with my mum and um, what I've been listening to as part of the, the UK sort of uh, Britpop scene, really. Um. So what's your favourite song you've written and why? Oh, okay. Um, well, the favourite one of yeah, my favourite one that I, that I've wrote as a song, I would probably, I'd probably say "Captain of the Seas" as a as a recording. Uh, because um, I think that's one of the songs where I managed to like really capture emotion into the recording and uh i worked with some great people on it so they've it's got a singer called blenid who's an amazing vocalist um she's irish she lives in london and her career is getting fantastic um and she has got the most amazing voice and it's got uh anna corcoran on piano and she plays for uh with Robert Vincent, who's an amazing songwriter, and she played on Laura Marlin's album. And then there's my friend Robin Coob, who plays under the name Run Run Remedy. From she's from Manchester, um, and she plays the violin on it. And all those people, they kind of bought into what the song was about because it was the first song I wrote after being really poorly from from my own. Uh, period of time being really ill with my mental health so it means a lot from uh from a personal point of view and a reflective view but then also from a from a like a production point of view and how it clicked with all the those artists uh, yeah that'd be my 
yeah, it will be that one. <laughs> um, so what's been your proudest accomplishment as a musician? I, I think it's when, when, when we released the debut album last year, it got into the official charts mm -hmm. in the, uh, went top 20 in the official uh, folk albums chart, in the official Americana albums charts, and in the official Indie Breakers album charts, top 20, which is the Indie Breakers one is for independent artists that haven't had a top 40 album. And... uh. So yeah, to have, spend a week at top twenty in both, well, in in all three of those was just just amazing because I I did it I did it all myself. So I, in effect, to, you, you know, you to get it registered for the charts and all that is so much work, and it's the it's the work of what a record label would do. So to do it all myself and to to achieve that, that was yeah. I'm I still think now, like whoa, we did that, you know. So it's yeah, no, it'll be it'll be that. Oh, sounds amazing. Well done. Thank you. So you're playing a number of shows, including festivals this summer. Um, would you like to tell us about them? Yeah, we've done um so we did uh we we did Camper Jam, which is a great festival for lovers of camper vans, funnily enough, it's all in the title. <laughs> um we I've got a feeling. No. Oh yeah. So the next one is Rock and Ribs. That's uh, down in Somerset, and that's got. Well, obviously, again, it's all in the title. I think it's like loads of ribs <laughs> and rock, but they've also got a country stage, and um, they've got things like monster trucks there. It's like an American sort of theme themed festival. That'd be cool, and then we play um. It's a little one in work Worksworth in Derbyshire as well in August called Transmissions from the Peak, which will be cool. And then we've got Camper Calling, which I suppose is the big one at the end of August. Uh, yeah. Oh, and then, and then we play. I've not announced these yet because I was, well, I just, I need to do it. But we've got, um, Great Barn Festival in Oxford in September, and it's uh, in a, like a National Trust mm -hmm. area, which has got a big barn. And I don't think we play in the barn. I think they put us in a tent outside it. But that looks pretty amazing. That's like a more aimed at like folk and roots music. Yeah. So we've we've had um we were very lucky last year that we played Why Not Festival in the Long Road. Nice. And uh. And again, this year we've had a really good lineup of festivals. So, um, you know, anyone who gets on the, the festivals can can take some pride with them because so many people try and get on them. Yeah. So, anyone who does, you know, you can always pat yourself on the back. So, yeah, really pleased with them. I'll leave the links to them in the description below so people can check them out. Oh, so thank you. All right. Um, so what can fans expect from one of your gigs? Uh, I talk a lot. <laughs> um, so uh, people can expect little music and really bad jokes. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy telling the stories behind the songs. And I do enjoy talking and connecting with the crowds. I, I don't do it as much at some of the festivals because although the one you were at, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, I just like those when you do the smaller shows. It's you know, it's all part of the the show for me. Is is yeah. telling the stories behind the song and 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 sharing sharing moments with the audience. Um. Yeah, and and I like to think that even though some of the songs that we play, the content comes from some of the like the worst times I ever experienced. They carry a positive message, and um, I like to think we leave people 
after the shows um with a smile on the face yeah uh and also it's yeah i'd say that people will leave with a smile on the face after listening to some really good music and laughing at my poor jokes yeah, so what's your dream venue to perform at and why mm. well i've i've got um I've 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 look I've played at what one of them, right? Because I always wanted because growing up around, well in Tamworth and going to Birmingham a lot, yeah. I always wanted to play at Birmingham Symphony Hall, and I've and I was look, lucky to do that a few years ago. That was amazing. Um, my I've I had a bucket list of five things that I wanted to do when I st when I started playing music, and uh, one of them on that was to play the Albert Hall. That's that's what the the big one, um, because it's the Albert Hall man. It's just <laughs> like yeah. it would be mega, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. So that's 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 the big one, Albert Hall. Um. So finally, what's next for you? Uh so we are, yeah. We've got these summer shows, and then we have um, we're booking a, a full tour for um like september october november time nice. so we well a full tour for us doesn't mean that we're like constantly gigging for all of september october november because we've all got little little children so young children so we we try and sort of just gig uh like put some dates in at the weekend yeah. um and 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 then in a week we're all yeah working and looking after our kids and having family time and that we can't just like book a block of three weeks and just go because it just doesn't work for it'll cost us more in childcare fees than it than it would for anything. But um yeah so we've got um dates from September right through to the start of December. Nice. And we um play at uh Sheffield, Leeds, um Oxford, Burton on Trent, Tamworth. Uh oh God, Hassocks right down south. There's uh, two shows in London. Um, yes, yeah, so we go all over with that. And then we um and we're recording the next album as well, which I hopefully release in September 2025. And we've already started booking the, the album launch tour for that as well. So kind of we're busy and it's only just it's just gonna keep growing uh for the next two years really. So yeah. We've we I try and plan in advance what 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 we wanna do in that. So we've got the next two years really sort of all all lined up. So yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming for you. <laughs> yeah, it's well look, we've had like the most amazing last 12 15 months yeah and uh, i was really struggling to think like okay that's been great but how do we keep momentum going yeah. and uh and what do we do and we, we've we've managed to do that and so we've been really lucky with um well it is there's look there's a lot of hard work goes into it of course yeah. but um you know we've been lucky with what's been coming our way and yeah long may it continue hopefully Definitely. Um, so a massive thank you, Craig, for joining me on Totally Music. If anyone would like to check out Craig's music, I'll leave all the links in the description below for you. Thank you. No, thanks for having us. And well done for everything you do. It's brilliant. Thank you.